Hey, welcome to The Conversation. You're listening to Andy Mason, and this is authentic conversations around the messy intersection of faith, family, and business. We've been talking about leadership. That's been a focus so much for this year, really. And this session, I want to unpack how I am growing as a leader. And really, I'm going to unpack what I'm listening to, what I'm reading, why I'm reading those things, how I do that, like practically, when you're a busy person, how do I do that? And then some things that I'm coming out of that, which is kind of like as I highlight the different books, podcasts, audiobooks that I am ingesting. So firstly, you know, why is this so important? Are, are you too busy? Like, you too busy to read? Well, for me personally, I'm too busy not to. And I just know as a leader, you are reading, you are listening to things every single day. And if you don't intentionally feed yourself, you'll end up uh, feeding on what someone else is feeding you. And that's like food, literally. If you don't intentionally feed yourself, you'll end up snacking, you'll end up fast fooding and uh, junk in, junk out. You become like what you feed on and consume. I sincerely believe that leaders are learners. So whether that's reading, whether that's listening, whether that's intentional groups that you inter interact with, uh, I don't really care. I just know that it's so, so important to learn to grow as a leader. And one of the greatest ways is to listen, read, uh, work out different ways to interact with people that have gone before us, whether that's mentors, coaches, uh, consultants, whatever those people may be called. I want to surround myself with people and learn from their mistakes, their wisdom, and their growth. So number one, why I listen and read. Pretty much I've unpacked that already. I want to grow. Uh, I want to be a lifetime person who grows. It's interesting, over the last period, when, there's, when I tend to be stressed, I haven't always read or listened. I, for me personally, getting outdoors, getting into nature. I am so loving this right now, so grateful to God for what is around me in my physical location. My office looks out with two big windows straight onto trees, the lawn, and everything is bright, bright green. We are spring here in Redding, California, and it is looking beautiful. I am so grateful for that. That restores my soul. But what I've learned is I also need to intentionally feed. Now, here's an interesting thing, and this be the grace of God. One of the things that I do to just literally check out um, and play is I, I talk about outdoor stuff. I've talked about that, but I've, I've played some PlayStation games would have been, which have been fun. Here's the interesting thing. This year, something's changed in that I'm so excited and so hungry for what I'm learning I would rather pick up a book or podcast than pick up a PlayStation device. I just recognized that lately. So my appetite for the instant gratification of a game has been replaced by my hunger for learning from a book or a podcast. I would just call that the grace of God. And I pray the same for you also, whatever that is you do, that you just feed. Now, I'm not saying don't play PlayStation, don't play games. I'm just saying that's fascinating to just observe that and mean what's happening right now. So why do I do this? I want to grow. I know there's so much that I don't know. Not learning is simply arrogance and sets you up for stupid mistakes that we don't have to do. We can learn from those who've gone before us. And so many people have written what they have learned in books and podcasts. There is no excuse for not knowing with so much information around us. It's just knowing what. Uh, number two is how do I listen? How do I read? So uh, you, you know, you may guess I'm busy. We've got four teenage uh, kids. I love them. I've got time with them. They're heading off to college, so that's important. My wife is my best friend. We'll walk together. Obviously, I'm not reading or listening to something else as I'm walking with my wife or playing with my kids. That would be offensive. But we also have uh, three dogs, a bunch of chickens and ducks that need feeding and their eggs to be disposed of, sold, given away. Uh, I led business people all over the world. I've got friends and family spread everywhere. All of this takes time. And I've also got three acre property whose landscape was destroyed by a fire in 2018. 
and that is still being replaced. Just this weekend, I was out laying irrigation, planting some live oaks. That's an oak tree to replace what was burned. It felt so good. Uh, planting these things, getting that landscape up and going again so it's going to be beautiful and green. And I just, I'm enjoying that. So I've got lots to do. And needs to say that I've got every excuse to be busy. So I can be busy or I can just get creative. So here's some things that I do that, that pretty much don't take any extra time out of my day that enabled me to learn, read, listen. Uh, I read a couple of pages every single night before I go to sleep. That's a, a recent habit that I've formed. So literally just a few pages a night and you'll be amazed how quickly you can go through a book and also what you are actually then feeding on and meditating on overnight is that's the, the book I'll take to bed. Uh, I read a few pages on Saturday mornings before I start on chores. And obviously Monday to Friday, we've got a faster schedule with work, with school, but Saturday mornings is a little bit slower so I can do that. Sunday, uh, that's about to kick back into church in person, prayer meetings. So there's not as much time going forward on a Sunday but historically, well, the last 12 months, Sunday mornings have been fantastic to slow, get up slower, read, go for a walk or a run, and then church on the screen at 10 a.m. That's going to change in the next couple of weeks. Uh, another one is I snatch a few pages here and there during the week, uh, just some downtime. There might be, my wife might be doing something, uh, and I'll just sit down and read a book. Uh, I listen to audiobooks. If I wake in the night, the Bible, Bible on audio, that's what I've found is if I wake in the night, not necessarily anxious, but just awake, uh, if I wake early this morning, I wake up at 5 a.m. and I just lean over, hopefully quietly this morning, not so good, and I woke my wife. But if I can do that really, really quietly, I can plug in and I can listen to an audio book. So this morning, that was like an hour that I was just listening to an audio book. Uh, R.T. Kendall on the Lord's Prayer, and just as I'm lying in bed listening. That that was just beautiful, but that's time. Uh, if I wake in the middle of the night, I, I'll do that and I'll set it on a timer. So literally after maybe 25 minutes or 30 minutes or whatever I'm feeling like, it will just turn off. And what I'll find is I'll just go back to sleep, which is really, really good. Um, but then here's a really good one is I listen to audios or podcasts as I do chores, whether I'm washing dishes, uh, whether I am out the back and uh, planting trees. If I'm not with someone else that I'm doing that with, then I'll listen then. I'll listen as I drive in and out of town to, to maybe pick up groceries or just do general chores or maybe I'm going to work or from work or to an appointment or from an appointment. That's 10 minutes, 15 minutes I can just pop on a podcast. Yeah, here's a secret too. I typically, depending on the, the reader, I will listen to podcasts about 1.5 speed and I listen to books somewhere between 1.2 and 1.5 speed, depending on who is speaking and the pace of their audio. I find that to be really good. And obviously when I go I do exercise, if I'm on my own, uh, if I'm mountain biking or running, I'll throw a little earbud in my ear and listen. And I find that's so good. I can literally f take you to places where the moment that I heard something in a book or in a podcast or an audio is like, that's where I was on the trail or that's where I was and doing the dishes. It's like, oh my gosh, I've got to stop, dry my hands and write something down because that was so, so good. The point is, there's always time for what is most important. So I'd challenge you with that. Uh, I don't know whether you go to the gym, you do other things. There's always a way that you can do this, and I call it double time, where you can do exercise as well as listen, or you can go for exercise or chores or driving. There's downtime that you can sneak in to uh, listen to something, read something. And number three is what am I listening to or reading at the moment? 
Um, for me, the themes I'm sensing the Lord say to me about this year is, is one is leadership, uh, stand up, speak up, don't shrink back, don't draw back, don't hold back. Your voice is so important and silence is not an option. So I'm never getting that. And so I'm, so that's all around leadership. The second one is the kingdom of God. Matthew 6, seek first the kingdom and his righteousness. And so I'm intentionally feeding myself on resources and boxes about those two subjects. And then I also get recommendations all the time. Uh, friends, people I know and trust, that if something really resonates with me, I'll go ahead and grab a hold of it. And if something, if I'm listening to something and I love it, then I'll get the physical copy. Uh, so I've got that on my shelf I can go back to refer to. If I uh, listen to something and then I've got the physical book and it's really gripping, it's like this is something that I'm going to hold on to. I'll then get additional copies to give away. And so I've got some copies right now on my shelf. I'm looking at these. Uh, the Christian Entrepreneur by Brock Shinen. I've got those to give away. I've got the, the Search for God and Guinness. That's a phenomenal story about transformation through business in Ireland. I've got that on my shelf. I've got another gospel, uh, Elisa Childers, uh, to give away tattoos on the heart. That is a powerful, powerful book. Um, I've got that sitting there. Supernatural Courage, the story of Tracy Evans. Sacred Marriage, fantastic book. I've got that sitting in my shelf giveaway. And the one that I've been giving the most of away, and literally a brand new box of these arrived today that we will give away as I'm meeting with someone or as I'm talking. Or, and it's Ford Taylor's book, Relational Leadership. And I'll come to those in a moment. So what are some of the books that I've just finished or read? And then I'm going to tell you some podcasts as well that are loving at the moment. So uh, here's, here's, some, here's, here's the books. I started this year with Jack Taylor's book, The Cosmic Initiative. Now, that's all around the kingdom. It's like, it says on the front cover, I'm holding this up right now, Restoring the Kingdom, Igniting the Awakening. I love this. When someone has done over, I think, five or six decades of ministry, you know, in his late 80s, and he writes this book, someone with that longevity and that wisdom, that scholarly background, he's seen it all, done it all. I want to listen to that. So I was uh, recommended that book and have read it and inhaled it. Uh, so, so good. Uh, I'm looking at it. Actually, I started reading this in November and I just wrote in the cover, Lord, as I read, let your kingdom come alive in me and disciple me through these pages. If you read that, you read the introduction and it says for, uh, um, for uh, sorry, Jack Taylor says this. And literally, I have prayed, I've prayed for you that as you read this, every part of this will impact you. And it literally feels like he is discipling me through the pages. I read this and I read his life and the ups and the downs. And then it just grips me. So that's all around the kingdom of God and how that plays out and translates that into our life today. At the end of that book, he actually refers to a bunch of different resources that he recommends to go further into the kingdom of God. And I have then literally gone through some of those, got them on audio, got them on my list of books that I want to listen to or read this year. And so that led me to E. Stanley Jones. So Jack Taylor, I think is his late 80s now in 2021. E. Stanley Jones was 87 and died 1973, the year that I was born. And he literally was decades of as a minister, as a missionary, and like particularly in India. And he wrote this book, The Unshakable Kingdom and the Unchanging Person. And I'm probably, I'm at page 243 of that. It's got big letters, so you feel like you're reading it fast. And I am loving this. Oh my gosh, it's this, he kind of writes as he would speak. And this is, again, all about the kingdom of God and all about Jesus. 
And I am really loving this. Again, just getting back to what is most important. What is the core to my walk with Jesus in all of life? And it's practical, it's thoughtful, it's laid out, it's logical, it's scripture bound, and it is brilliant. And I'm loving it. Stories in there. So that's another one that I've just finished. Uh, the the other one, actually, this one I listened to as an audio book, and then I got the physical book, uh, Miles Monroe. I read or listened to God's Big Idea, and then I listened to Rediscovering the Kingdom, and then I listened to Applying the Kingdom. There's a bunch of others by Miles Monroe. Miles Monroe tra- tragically died in a plane crash, but is a Caribbean-grown uh, author, businessman, uh, speaker, uh, wonderful, wonderful man of God. And he wrote a series of books all around the kingdom, kingdom principles, what the kingdom is, how it applies in business and in life, in marriage, in prayer, so many different aspects. So I got a hold of the physical book, Rediscovering the Kingdom, after I listened to that as an audio book, thinking, oh my gosh, there's too many good points in this. To just leave it as an audiobook. And then literally what I do is I as I read the book in person, I will uh, then use a pen, I scribble, I make notes, I underline things so I can go back quickly and then find certain places, certain spots. It's like, now where was that? I can go straight back to that. Now I do that with my physical Bible also. Uh, make notes, use highlighters, underline, uh, put I love that wide reference Bible so you can put notes on the side. And really that's a credit to my pastor when I was in New Zealand. His name is Mike Connell in Hastings. Wonderful Bible teacher and unpacking scripture and laying it out for us. Love, love, love that. The, uh, the audio book that I'm listening to right now is just about finished. Again, this was a reference from Jack Taylor is R.T. Kendall. Uh, again, prolific author, speaker. The book is The Lord's Prayer. And that has kicked my butt in the best possible way. It literally unpacks the meaning in behind the Lord's Prayer that Jesus, when the disciples said to Jesus, teach us to pray. He then, Jesus actually is recorded. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. This unpacks that whole uh, prayer and gives great understanding. Just little things like, uh, Father, forgive us this day, or give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Literally means, I choose to forgive others to the standard that God forgave me. It's like, oh my gosh, that's a high standard. So there's so much in there that's so, so good. And he's got another one on the power of humility that I want to line up and, and listen to next. Uh, Ford Taylor's book, Relational Leadership. This has been this is the book that I've given away the most copies of recently. I am loving it. It's it's about leadership. It's about uh, it, it's like if you've read Danny Silk's book, The Culture of Honor. This is kind of like that, but in practice and in a language that you can immediately apply to your business, to your marriage, to uh, your sports team, to your church, to whatever it is that you're leading. It's so full of really, really practical tools that you can use in any environment. You say you're not in a Christian environment, that's okay. This will be immediately applicable. Things like a social covenant, finding out as a team, what's the way that we want to treat each other? And what are we going to do if someone doesn't follow that? How do we process that? Now, you and I may know that's Matthew 18 laid out. This is how we're going to deal with people that uh, offend us or go against the standards that we have in our workplace to bring about the best in people. But it's literally laid out that anybody could apply and use. I am loving, loving, loving that. And also, I've listened to it, I've read it, I am going through the on-demand platform that he's got, and also there's a podcast that you can get a bunch of what's in that book for free just by listening to the podcast, which is just brilliant also. Um, So that's Ford Taylor's book, Relational Leadership, and all the links to these books I'm giving you in the the show notes below. Um, Another book, Elisa Childers, Another Gospel. This 
I have loved. This has lit me up to the hist historical Christianity, biblical Christianity, the foundation of Scripture. Um, as I'm navigating a bunch of different people that uh, their walk with Jesus is not based on Scripture. It's based on their own definition. That's called progressive Christianity. <laughs> it's just not Christianity. It's not based on Christ and his teaching. It's based on their own they are the center of it rather than Christ and the scriptures and historical uh, historical Christianity. I have loved that book. It's gone deep into some of those things, uh, things like apologetics, understanding that, but written in a way that's so easy to read. Elisa Childers, Another Gospel. Um, here's a fun one. Um, I was listening to Ford Taylor talk about in his book, he refers to a book called The Goal by Eliyahu Goldratt. Now, you can get the book. It's, it's the theory of constraints, but I found the comic. It's a business comic. So I've got that. I'm three quarters of the way through. I love comics. I love Calvin and Hobbes. I love Pearls Before Swine. Uh, my son loves those. So I got this as a comic and wondering, is my son going to read this as well? So I'm enjoying that. And then I've got one on my shelf to read, a good friend, new friend, Patrice Sargay uh, from the Nehemiah Project, wrote a book, Biblical Entrepreneurship. Uh, I've had that recommended to me as the best kingdom business book ever in terms of real practical business. Literally lays out the whole process from a biblical foundation. Plus, uh, I know Patrice and love what he's doing and how he's doing it and the stories from his life is so, so good. So those are the books. And then current pod podcasts, uh, Elisa Childers podcast, she actually interviews a bunch of different people from people that have come out of uh, new age religion, gurus, uh, to this guy that was a detective in cold cases and then didn't believe in Jesus. And so used his cold case detective analytic skills, initially intending to disprove the Bible. And the further he got into it, the more he realized based on his detective skills and analysis, he proved that actually this is real, this is true. And so he became a follower of Jesus. And so those are the kinds of people that Elisa is interviewing. Fantastic. I'm loving that. Uh, Ford Taylor Talks, I've already mentioned that. I enjoy that. It's around leadership, around culture, uh, around interviewing people, around racial reconciliation, around some of those real practical, difficult topics. Super practical, super applicable. And then God is not a theory with Ken Fish. Uh, this is probably my latest favorite. Uh, you know, things like he's interviewed a physicist on um, things like you know, God and the supernatural and uh, um, physics, like some of the quantum theory things that blow your mind. But you're talking to someone that's got a PhD in physics from a reputable uh, university. And then you've got Ken Fish, who speaks about seven languages uh, read the Bible in Greek and Latin. Sounds like him. He seems to be a genius as well, but walks in miracle signs and wonders. So uh, Christians with their brains turned on and leveraging, loving the Lord with heart, mind, soul and spirit. It's every capacity. I am loving that, what they're doing. Uh, there's, there's a podcast in there just recently where he interviews a guy, Dane, who was alongside of John Wimber in the vineyard. And just when he starts to speak, I just feel the presence of God. Like, I don't know who this guy is, but there's something about the life of God around him. So I'm loving that, enjoying my connection with Ken Fish. And uh, so those are three podcasts that I'm listening to. Uh, when, you know, that's when I'm doing jobs, going for a run uh, to and from work in town. And then... Uh, the, the only other one that, in terms of, you say, well, do you do you read the news as least as possible? Because so much of it's just crazy. But yes, I will read headlines. Uh, but what I do get is I get an email every morning. It's called The Brew, and I've found that to be really, really good. It's a summary of the news. It's free, and I've got a link to that. You can obviously Google that or 
you can uh, click on the link on below in my show notes. So those are some of the things that I'm listening, I'm learning, I'm growing, kingdom, leadership, uh, my desire and hunger for scripture has increased as I've been reading these books. I'm loving it. Uh, I've come alive in that, which is to such an extent that some of the other appetites for uh, for gaming is just like not there. Um, I'm loving being outside. I'm loving the weather. I'm loving everything fully alive and really excited about what we're stepping into. So I pray that this has been encouraging for you, that this has stimulated you to do some of the same, to, to find out, you know, maybe one of those books, maybe one of those podcasts would stir you to think, hey, I want to find out more. I want to grow. I want to be a leader that's continually sharp and learning. So I bless you in that process. Uh, make sure if you've got any questions or comments, you things you'd like us to discuss, please don't hesitate to contact me, Andy at authentic-solutions.com. And we will have another conversation next week.